Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Jeffrey Wheeler, pastor of the Tabernacle Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia, welcoming you to my YouTube channel, The Hidden Conflict. Today, by the good grace of God, we're going to be addressing a question dealing in the matter of whether or not a Christian, a born-again believer, um, has the freedom to smoke marijuana, weed, cannabis, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's something I, I believe is very, very, very serious and it needs to be addressed from a biblical perspective because, uh, first of all, you got some people professing to be Christian saying that there's no restriction in the Bible against smoking marijuana, which is not true. Um, also, uh, you have some people with this philosophy saying, well, you know, God created everything, and everything God created is good, and so there's nothing wrong with smoking marijuana, which, uh, which is another situation that I'm going to show you from the Word of God. That statement is also not true. And, you know, one of the big problems that we have uh, today, um, and, and the reason why we're having all of these issues with uh, questions like, uh, what we're talking about, what we're going to be talking about today, whether or not Christians should smoke marijuana, whether or not Christians, amen, are, are to um, have the freedom to drink, uh, have the freedom to, uh, you know, do whatever they want to do, I guess, in Christ. You know, they, they take their freedom, and, and what the Bible warns us that we're never to use our freedom, amen, to satisfy our own personal lust and desires, but we are to use our freedom to serve our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So what I want to do, the first thing I want to help us to understand is this. The Bible lets us know that everything that God created, He, the Creator, proclaimed it to be very good. We look in Genesis, turn there real quick, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. The Bible uh, clearly tells us, as it says, listen, And God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. Now, we get the picture. Here's, here's the sixth day, the, the final day of creation, and God is finished, and he looks back at all that, he's, all that he made, and he proclaims that it was not just good, but very good. And the question is this. Does this include the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Because that was the first thing we need to understand that that was the only thing that God forbade man to partake of. So when God looked back at his at everything that he made, was did that include the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? That's the first question. The second thing I want to uh, want us to. Uh, to bring to your attention and that is in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17 and that is as, as we read this we understand that God clearly forbids man to partake of this particular tree let's read but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou Eateth thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, what type of tree is this? It is a tree that provides hidden knowledge. Knowledge of, hidden knowledge of good and evil. It is a knowledge, amen, um, that was to be kept from, amen, Adam. And eat. Now, I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Romans. Let's turn there real quick. Turn to the book of Romans. And as we turn uh, to the book of Romans, 
I want us to look at Romans chapter 16. Amen. Romans chapter 16. And I want us to look at verse 19. Because what I want to show you is that God forbids us. Amen. He, he, he forbids us to expose ourselves to certain knowledge. It's, it's, we don't have the capacity. Okay. Nor do we have the liberty. Whether it's in Christ or out of Christ. We do not have the liberty. Amen. Uh, to be exposed to a certain knowledge. Listen to this. Romans 16 verse 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf. Listen. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple or ignorant concerning evil. In other words, you and I are to be ignorant about certain knowledge. Amen. And we need to understand, listen to me very carefully, listen to me very carefully, because we're going somewhere with this. It is clear that God forbade Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge. And this knowledge was forbidden knowledge. Okay? Now, when you look at this, you realize that this knowledge, this forbidden knowledge, this hidden knowledge, amen, was and is occultic knowledge. The word in and of itself, occult, means hidden knowledge. or secret knowledge. Are you following me? So, we as believers know throughout the scriptures that we are not to in any way get associated with any type of occultic activity. We're not, that's, that's the reason why the Bible forbids us, amen, to, to get involved in soothsaying, palm reading, um, court, uh, Torah card, anything that is revealing hidden knowledge. The only knowledge that you and I as believers are to receive is that from the Spirit of the living God, who is the one who leads us, guides us in all His truths. Someone say amen out there. Now, you say, well, Pastor, what does this have to do with smoking weed? We're going there. Just hold your horses. We're going there. Now, I said that this knowledge, okay, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, amen, is related to occultic knowledge or knowledge that is forbidden. Now, who promoted, okay, God forbid uh, Adam and Eve to eat of this fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, that's obvious, but who encouraged and promoted the access of this knowledge. We have to say Satan. Amen. Satan is the one who manipulated Eve, amen, and beguiled Eve into tasting of the tree of the knowledge or eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and therefore exposing herself to occultic or hidden knowledge. Now, I want you, because now I'm going to show you, okay, I'm going to show you now how drug use in the scriptures are associated with the occult. So turn your Bible to the book of Revelations. And this is some very strong language. So I'm, 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 I'm telling you all, even you, uh, you, you save, you know, you, you're supposed to be saved folk out there. Amen. I got to say supposed because I'm going by what you say. 
And, and, and also you people out there that are lost, you need to listen to this. In Revelations in chapter 21, and I'm going to read verse 8. So listen very carefully, please. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now this is a group you don't want to be associated with because the Bible clearly states these folks is going to slam to hell. Somebody say amen. Now, the question is this. You say, well, well, it doesn't say drug users. It doesn't say, you know, anything about weed. Well, study, the scripture says, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, the word of God. Now, if you have, and please, if you don't have it, get it. If you have a Strong's Concordance, and you would look up the word sorcerers, that word in the original Greek would be interpreted as this. What does it mean, Brother Wheeler? It means one who uses drugs. Now, can I say, and, and please, come on now. Come on now. Don't even go there. Well, that means we can't take uh, this, and we can't take that for medicine. We're not talking about medicine. See, we're talking about drugs that open up your mind to receive hidden knowledge. And don't you tell me that marijuana doesn't do that. And LSD doesn't do that. Listen to me very carefully. Do you know that there are people that understand that drugs, marijuana in particular, can open up your third eye, which is an occultic term, amen, for you exposing yourself to receive hidden, occultic, demonic, satanic knowledge. And even though weed is not as strong as other psychedelics like LSD or shrooms, its ability to heighten your perception can definitely take you on a journey. And depending on your level of consciousness, weed can be the key to open doors into the spiritual realm. But as weed begins to penetrate your mind, body, and soul, it can awaken and heighten your spiritual senses. Smoking weed can make you a lot more consciously aware. It can even be the catalyst that helps you open up your third eye. Do you honestly think that a, a, a legitimate, born-again, blood-watched child of God should be opening up their spirit to receive occultic knowledge that God has clearly forbidden? Hmm? No. Ain't no way in heaven at all is that supposed to be happening to the child of God. Now, we need to understand something. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me child of God. Turn your Bible to the book of John, St. John. Turn there real quick. St. John uh, chapter 4. St. John chapter 4 and verse 24. The only time, listen to me, the only time you and I are to open up our spirit is to, is in reference to God's spirit. Now I'm going to show you that the occult, anything that will open up your spirit to a, to a spiritual entity, whether it's in yoga or whatever you're doing, is an occultic practice that God has forbidden. Listen to this. God is a spirit. 
Did you hear me? And they that what? Worship him can only worship him in or with their what? Their spirit. Smoking marijuana is a satanic means whereby a person, they call it the third eye, but it's really in essence your spirit being opened up to spiritual entities. And you better be very careful what you're doing. Now, turn to Romans chapter 8 for the believer. Romans chapter 8. I'm telling you, it's serious out here, y'all. It's serious. Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 16 in Romans chapter 8. This is what the Bible says. The Spirit itself, this is to the child of God, the person who's legitimately, genuinely born again. I'm not talking to church folks. I got to keep saying that. Amen. In this day and time. I mean, you got a lot of folks in church lost as a snowball in hell. They're not born again. Amen. And that's why they're involved with all this foolishness. But listen to this. The Spirit, what? Itself. Bear witness. Amen. With our, what? With our spirit. That's how it works, saints of God. Amen. That's how it works. Amen. The Holy Ghost of God. How do we get, uh, how do we understand? How do we get knowledge? How do we, children of God, how do we get it? We get it through the Spirit of God. Oh, come on now. Stick with me. It says here that the Spirit of God witnesses and ministers, amen, to our spirit and giving us information that we are what? That we are what? The children of God. Woo! Glory to God in the highest. Amen, somebody out there. Now, turn your Bible, if you will, turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians. Amen. Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians. And let's look at chapter, chapter 2. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, listen, listen to what the Bible says. Verse 10. Let's back up the verse. Let's pick up verse 9. Okay, let's pick up verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us, us who are born again, those who are Amen. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Unto us. How? How does God reveal the, the things, the hidden things, the things that eyes cannot see and an ear cannot hear? How does he get that information to us? He gets it to us by the Spirit of God, not through marijuana. Listen to me. you got people calling themselves Christians and saying that they get clarity and they get a, a, a word from the Lord when they get high smoking marijuana. They're getting something, but they're not getting it from the Holy Ghost of God. Did you hear me, saints? Man, I have some of the best times in God when I smoke. I bless my weed and I smoke and it's and it it just opened me up. I hear more clear, you know what I'm saying? It's like my mind is calm. It it like what it does <clears throat> like what it does for me. It prepares my mind to re to hear from God. Like it sets the mental atmosphere for me. Mm, mm, mm. Let's keep reading. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, "Knoweth no man but the Spirit of God." Now look. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is what of God. See, we we have we don't get high. We don't need drugs. We don't need to smoke marijuana, praise God, to get our, our spiritual enlightenment. Our spiritual enlightenment comes from the Holy Ghost of God. Look at this. The Bible says, now we, uh, 
receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Somebody out there give God the praise. Amen. Because he's worthy. Amen. Now, let's get down to it. Well, God made it. I can hear you right now. Some of you out there say, well, God created it. Did he? Can I show you in Scripture? Turn your Bible to the book of Genesis. Amen. Turn to Genesis chapter 3. Come on. Come on. Hang with me. Genesis chapter 3. And don't give me this junk about it ain't in the Bible because I'm staying straight in the Scriptures. Amen. So if you got a problem with what I'm saying, you got a problem with the Word of God. In Genesis chapter 3, I'm bringing something to your attention. Listen to me. I'm bringing something to your attention. That there are some plants that came not as the result of creation. In other words, there are some plants on this earth. Amen. Right now. That was not a part of God's original creation. And I'm not talking about anything that was genetically modified. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about plants that came as a consequence of sin. They came as a consequence, amen, of sin, which brought a curse, amen, and it produced, as a result, something that was not a part of God's crea original creation. So God didn't call it good. Amen. Listen. Genesis chapter 3. Look at verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of the knowledge. Okay. What, what did he do? He received hidden knowledge that was forbidden from him. And because he did that, because he listened to the voice of his wife, and he didn't listen to God, there were some consequences. Let's get look at the read. He said, Has eaten of the tree which I commanded. You hear what he said? I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. And because of it, cursed is the ground for what? Thy sake and sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Look at verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Now listen to me very carefully, because thorns and thistles were not a part of God's original creation. It was the result of a curse upon the ground. You know where I'm going. I'm, I've already showed you that we're forbidden to eat, a, take up any plant, any plant. Any fruit, amen, any plant that would bring or open your spirit up to forbidden knowledge. Things like marijuana, things like LSD. And I'm now showing you that it is not only possible, but I believe it is a fact. That marijuana, amen, and all of these occultic, all of these drugs that are used to open up a person's spirit to receive forbidden knowledge is only on this planet as a result of the curse that was upon the ground. Somebody say amen. And that's why I say to you, Today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, leave the devil's weed alone. Did you hear me? Leave. I'm talking to the people of God now. I'm not talking to those who's already in with the devil. I'm talking with those who are separated. Amen. Called out. Amen. Leave the devil's weed alone. Alone, in Jesus' name.